Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Place the Binding of Azure for a random run. Ooh, I like to it's like a band-aid, you know? You gotta get that boom boom boom. No, you gotta get that uh random out of the way right off the bat. And then hopefully our item room is so good. It isn't. In fact, I'm probably gonna just not take it. I'll take it. I hate taking it, but I'll take it. Just so it doesn't show up in a deal with the devil room later and totally screw us. Yeah, we didn't need to shoot the poop anyway, right? Um Sorry, my pop filter fell off, and I'm known for using some particularly powerful plosives, so I'd like that to be there. Um, yeah, I was hoping that item room be, would be good, or great even, because then our time where we hated Eve would be like, what, like eight seconds? Instead, we're now at least one floor of Eve hating. There's just no question about it. It's going to happen. The Widow is uh, not the most difficult fight that we could face thus far. A little annoying, but altogether um, should be surmountable. The problem is the spiders because, um, you know, we, we've got to prioritize. The number one priority is definitely hitting the widow Window. <laughs> Why did I correct myself to say the wrong thing? The Widow. Uh, the number two thing would be like getting the Widow to fall on these nubs. And somewhere along the line, some spiders are going to sneak through as they are doing right now and it's gonna make it very difficult for us to actually uh, get the job done come on just jump thank you of course he jumps when the the white nub is already just like one hit away from dying there we go better I knew I was gonna take damage there I I dodged into it basically I I uh, made the bed and now I I'm choosing a lie in it not a terrible fight though please not HP but HP would be better than some things damage that's a, uh, the best of both worlds I think we're still in uh you know, a little bit of a... The game has a head start on us, let's put it that way. But uh, I'm, I'm happy to have picked up what I would consider one of the best HP upgrades in the game. Now the problem is, if I take red hard damage, just like, you know, cancel Christmas basically, there goes our deal with the devil. Without a deal with the devil, I don't like our chances very much. That key is extremely valuable, of course. So we need to get through this next little part of the game without getting hit. This is possibly, on on every run I say this, but on, on a run with Eve where you start kinda weak and not very uh, strong from an HP perspective as well. People are gonna take that out of context. On a run where you start very weak and not very strong. Bah, oh, I took damage, okay. Well, at this point we might as well look for our item room, I would say, because we can at least get an item that makes us less likely to take damage against the boss. Super sloth, really, huh? Well, at least it's not Ultra Pride. Ultra Pride could be, a, and I'm not exaggerating here, Ultra Pride could be a death sentence for us. Super Sloth, just annoying. Pro okay. Disregard that. I don't think we get less of a deal with the Devil Chance every time we get hit. It's just the fact that we got hit that lowers our chances. So, as long as we can get HP back, or at the very least just not die on this floor, then I feel like, um, you know, this damage isn't necessarily hurting us that, that much. But it's fair to say that I'm a little disappointed. But the important thing, or one of the most important things, is just not tilting. It's easy to tilt when you're playing as Eve. Tilting, of course, is the, you know, the expression that, you know, you're, you're, it's like a poker expression. I think it comes from poker anyway, that, you know, you stop playing logically. Some really good cards here. Um, you stop playing logically and you start playing emotionally because you've, you've gotten riled up a little bit. You've been thrown off your game. Tilting's real in Isaac. And it happens early and often as Eve. We just gotta keep our cool because really the same rules for Eve applied, or the same rules apply to Eve as apply to every other character. Should have tried to push that in a different direction, but that's okay. Um, largely, winning is just a matter of living long enough for the game to carry you. Now it may take a little bit longer for the game to start carrying you as Eve, and you may have to have a little bit of more of your own kind of investment, your own uh, skill determining things. But it's still largely kind of the same beast. Now, Skeleton Key is a beautiful item. I'm extremely happy to have it. I definitely am not going to trade a bomb for a key in that situation, then. I think we'll check out what could be our secret room. That's extremely disappointing. Uh, I don't really see a need to go to our shop, then. So I'm going to use the Devil Card for sure on this boss fight. I don't think there's any point in saving it. I think it's, it's important to get it used uh, as soon as possible so that we can hopefully get this fight over with and uh, maybe have a semi-decent chance of getting a deal with the devil. We're lucky and non-lucky. 
We've got a good uh, boss to fight because it's easy, but it does give us um, an item that is not necessarily the most important item for us to get as uh, as Eve in our current situation. But it's all good. It's okay in spite of that. You know, familiars... I underrate them sometimes. Sometimes I overrate them too, but I underrate them sometimes as well. No deal with the devil, which is not that big of a surprise. We will go to our curse room now. We've still improved ourselves on this floor, but I wish we'd, uh, I wish we'd not taken so much dumb damage. I can just say it. It's, it's honest. Let's see what we've got inside of here. We do have access to our secret room, which may, in a one in a trillion situation, give us something better. I was thinking something enough to go to the shop anyway. Well, we got seven cents. We will use our, our last bomb to get out of here so we don't take more red heart damage than we need to. Uh, and with seven cents, it's possible that we could buy something on the shop. Maybe the thing that we would most want to buy, if we can't get, like, blue candle or something, is a spirit heart. We can get the map. That's really good. That's extraordinarily unlikely, but it worked out for us, so I'm very pleased with that. Now we don't need so many bombs to find secret rooms in the future, and we have 98 keys. My favorite uh, late 90s, early 2000s boy band. 98 keys. They played a really big piano. I missed a good opportunity there. They played a really big organ. Would have been a lot better. Anyway. Who does in this day and age? We're gonna basically just continue to spout nonsense until I get to our boss room. We've still been... If, if there's anything we've been extremely unlucky with on this run so far, it's not getting spirit hearts. And, you know, that's... It's not the kiss of death. Always. But it does make things more problematic, as you're probably noticing, you know? We, we run into one shitty room before the boss, and we're on Catacombs, so we'd expect to run into a few shitty rooms. Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, momentary lapse of concentration, or just a, you know, brownie in motion of some bullets puts us in a situation where, unfortunately, we've taken damage, and now we find ourselves in a much diminished chance to get a deal with the devil. Sucks pretty hard, but it, it's, you know, it's the reality of the situation we find ourselves in. I would love to get that Book of Revelations. That would solve so many problems for us, and it would actually play into our uh, existing cube of meat. Whether we want a third level cube of meat remains to be seen, but... Uh... Oh, and there's a Tinted Rock, too. Alright, okay. And we can definitely find our secret room. You know what? Yeah. we're gonna. I don't like this item, but we're probably not going to be using it too much longer anyway. Got a Spirit Heart back there. That'll at least guarantee our survival temporarily. The one time I don't want the one up because I wanted like seven cents here, so we could actually get to our uh, get to the amount of money we need to buy the goddamn Book of Revelations. Come on now, but I mean the one up is great because it, it increases our ability to survive long enough to actually get something good enough to carry us, as I often say. And we should be able to get it anyway by this blood bank, but it's a little tight. We'll see. I think we'll be able to do it though. Extra key, not that valuable. I'm disappointed that we're not going to have. Uh, we're not going to have our uh, candle ready. Not candle, feather. So I'm actually going to go fight another room. It's a difficult one. But I figure by fighting this room, even if we take a little bit of damage, it'll drastically lower our chances of taking a lot of damage on the boss fight. And if possible, I would actually much prefer to uh, get the, get the uh, Book of Revelations prior to the boss fight so we could guarantee that we'd be fighting Pestilence. I don't know if that's going to be plausible, though. Like, I can play the... This is the risky part, right? Like, I could probably do it. Let's give it a try. This could be fun, at least. Just, I need a couple of, like, double payouts. At least we're going into the fight with Horror Babylon. And there's enough money. We are going to take the... Uh... We're going to take the feather into the boss fight with us. But we're going to buy Book of Revelations first. So that we should give ourselves nearly a 100% chance of fighting Pestilence. And this Book of Revelations might be the, the ticket, you know? It might be what we need to actually succeed here. Just don't forget to take Book of Revelations with you, otherwise we just overpaid drastically for a Spirit Heart. Ooh, barely snuck out of the way there. This is alright, though. It's gonna be Pestilence, that's what we hoped for, obviously. Um, our Beams of Light from Heaven did nothing. But we do have 
for Babylon. Which, you know, it's not quite a devil card, probably, but it does give us a bit of a damage boost. Which I would say is a pretty relevant concern for us at this moment. Now, even with our uh, Horror Babylon active, we're not really blowing the doors off from a, an offensive standpoint here. In fact, we're, we're still pretty darn weak. I don't know why I'm focusing on the Silkworms first. I guess it's basically just to get some map control back because as of right now, I, you know, the number of spaces where I can actually move are very much compromised. I think the way my brain kind of works in Isaac is I, I, I kind of like subtly or subconsciously may mark areas as safe or unsafe based on what kind of enemies are in them and whether or not there are enemies in them to begin with. When there's a lot of enemies on the screen, a lot of the areas marked as unsafe, I start feeling a little bit claustrophobic. Gotta get the heck out of there. Now this is deal with the Devil Central. Please make this work. We did take red hard damage on the floor. We won't take red hard damage on the boss. Unless something goes terribly drastically wrong. Worst case scenario, one cube of meat. And that is our worst case scenario. That gives us a second level cube of meat, which is a very, very slight damage improvement. We can stay in Horror, Horror of Babylon state as long as we want. Well, as long as we can. And we'll be heading down to the next floor. If we just get more red hearts, like one half more red heart even, we could probably guarantee ourselves a, a shot at the deal with the devil by getting five cents. I don't know if it's going to be possible though. So with these spirit hearts, the dream is that the next floor allows us to... Uh, oh, we need one penny now. So one half red heart would totally do it. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to sacrifice half of a spirit heart. Even though it sounds so dumb. Or maybe we could just do this. Um, I don't like doing this. But I'm going to do this. Just be careful here. Um, we could sacrifice half of a spirit heart to get to five cents. And maybe give ourselves a blood bank on the next floor. I think that would pay for itself. Oh, never mind. We're good. Okay, we don't need to do it now. So now we should be at least in the running to get a deal with the devil on the next... Or a, a blood bank on the next floor. That worked out. I, I never expected to. If we had Horror Babylon, I would totally go to our cursed room, but we don't, so no. Of course it's Catacombs. At this point, it's just par for the course. I expect the game to not uh, make it easy on me. So what do we do? Don't get hit, basically. Find our boss room as soon as we possibly can. Hope that we can get enough money to make our shop worthwhile, and then hope that our shop is not greed, and instead maybe has a nun's habit on it. Because if we get a nun's habit in combination with what we've already got going on, we're in a great position. I had a feeling that this would happen. That's okay, maybe it sorts our money situation out for, for all future floors. We just pick up a decent amount on the ground here. It's not like we wasted uh, a precious resource in the form of our key. Just keep... Uh, it's decent money, it's like 10 cents. Yeah, it was exactly 10 cents. And we'll, oh, and there's another one back there that I can get. So 17 cents, if we get like one blood bank, probably sorts us out financially for the remainder of the run. That's okay. I can, I can live with that. This is not a special room. Now, I was trying to bait these guys into firing the other way. It's alright though. I really feel that going low on red hearts and, and putting ourselves in Horror of Babylon State was the right decision. I'm going to very much try to not forsake that. Because I think... Our chances go way, way down if I start trying to handle this with my default damage. It's a bit of a maze here, but it's not so bad. We'll just hide out here. And then, oh, no. Now's not the time. Now is the time. This is our boss room, and there is an arcade. Okay, so now we can take red hearts if we wanted to. As long as we trade them away. And we're going to have a deal with the devil, or not deal with the devil, but a, a spirit heart ready. I'd kind of like to have some bombs. I guess we could gamble for it, but whatever. Let's just do it. And it's a relatively low HP boss, which is kind of what I'm hoping for at this point, because it means that I won't have to dodge very long. I would rather fight this boss, honestly, than something like Gertie, where um, the, the crowd control could just get overwhelming. That damage is meaningless. We should have over 100% chance to get a deal with the devil here. With over 100% chance to get a deal with the devil, I'm not going to be too picky about what shows up. As long as it's an improvement in pretty much any regard, I think I'll take it. And the HP is an improvement. For sure. No Krampus. Okay, we'll definitely take the Pact. 
Uh, I'm not gonna take the mark. Which I think is obvious. Um, or not the mark, sorry, the nail. Because we already have... The Book of Revelations, which is slightly worse than the nail, but not trade 2 HP away worse. No question about it. Okay, so this is good. This is, this is really good, actually. Could gamble on the fortune teller to try to win maybe a trinket that, well, a spirit hearts for one, but also maybe a trinket that makes pennies better, and then we play a little bit more often on the blood bank or something like that, but I'm just going to be a little bit more conservative with our money and tackle it in the way that you would probably tackle it most of the time, which is just uh, spend your extra red hearts on the blood bank and then save the money and bank it for future floors because I really don't want to blow a chance to get... Uh, the 9-volt. Or not 9-volt. Nuns have 9-volt would be great, too, but we really need to maximize our chances of, of at least getting into those shops with enough money to buy whatever's available. You know, help the game help us. It's fairly realistic that we won't get Nuns Habit or 9-volt or battery, but the worst thing would be to get them but not be able to actually purchase them because we were trying to earn, f like, Flat Penny or something. I, I realize, by the way, Flat Penny would be the worst for us right now. Anyway, two bombs, that's nice. We also got X-ray goggles, which is beautiful. That saves us so many bombs. And will also give us access to every second secret room. That we at least make the effort to backtrack for. These books are bad, we can't re-roll them. That's just acceptable though, that's just what we do. Um, we'll definitely walk in here. Three cents. I think I'll sacrifice the spirit heart to come in here. And... It was only half a spirit heart, so I guess we do have that going for us. Let's see if we find our secret room this way. I doubt it, but that's okay. Uh, there is a tinted rock over here. I hate this room. I'm gonna take damage on this room. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday for the rest of your life. Bomb for a spirit heart is okay. That's not our second secret room. I've gotta try for it. No other red hearts here is very disappointing as well. Oh, it is here, okay. Well, that was uh, not necessarily worth it, but it's worth it for the peace of mind. Now I know, at least, what we got out of that. So, we'll be heading up to the next, or down to the next floor. I know we could gamble a little bit more, you know. I'm, I'm just, I'm not into that, really, to be honest with you. I like to let the run speak for itself, because it saves me some time, saves me some mental stress. And again, it's all about morale, man. You gotta keep morale high. If I was a, if I was a, a, a general or a commanding officer, in an army, uh, I would, I wouldn't be the guy who's like work 25 hours a day. You know, that's valuable. There's value in discipline, but also eh, maybe here's some of the, you know, the rum that the the officers get. Why don't you guys have some fun tonight, and we'll we'll get back to saving the world tomorrow. That might demonstrate an unimaginable amount of ignorance about how the modern military works. That wouldn't surprise me, considering I have absolutely no idea how the modern military works. And that's okay. I'm just cracking a joke. I'm not trying to uh, offend anybody or their grandfathers. Let's move along. But man, I gotta say, you know, I, I've been the older I get, the more. Um, and I'm not a I'm not a patriotic person, because I am still of that age where I'm like, man, these are just arbitrary borders on a map, blah blah blah, you know. And I think there is something to be said about that, but. I'm so sick and tired of, of you Americans. No, I'm sick and tired of you Americans insulting the Canadian military, all right? I get it. You have the strongest military in world history. But there is like, if you really think about it, I don't think many people have really thought about it. There's pretty much no shittier insult than, well, yeah, you're lucky we don't go to war because we would like slaughter your population and take you over. And it's like, what do you, what do you say to that? I mean, it is, I guess, a joke. We, we have a military. It's, you, we have incredible lists of accomplishments in the, the World Wars and the Korean War, etc., etc. But, um, man, that's like your, the ultimate trump card, isn't it? Hey, I would, you're lucky, you know, you're on our good side or we would just take you over. Basically, what you're saying is, we could be total assholes if we want to. You're lucky we're not being total assholes. Like, okay, I mean, you're not wrong, necessarily. I don't think you'd necessarily like to, I, I think a, you know, for all the jocularity associated with the discourse, I think an American-Canadian war would be ugly. I think that would be... You want to fight us up in the Arctic here? Go ahead. I mean, don't go ahead, seriously, because, like, millions of people would probably die, but, like... I don't know, it just... It always struck me that, that people say that as, like, a joke. It's like a joke, like, <laughs> you're lucky you don't make me mad because I'll shoot you in the head and, like, take all your shit. Like, that's... You, if you say that, you'd be like, calm down, psycho. 
But if you say, hey, you know, it's a good thing our countries are friends, otherwise we would, like, you know, take over your country and, you know, remove democracy and kill a bunch of your citizens. It's like, oh, that's a funny joke. I don't get it, man. Anyway. Just kind of a weird thing to say. There, I, I said it. Is that really the metric that we're going to use? Is that, uh, you know, you have the strongest military in, in world history, which I think is... I'm, you know, I'm not trying to start any arguments with that, but I do think that probably the, you know, 2014 era United States, if you put them up against any other army in history, would probably, at least in conventional context, be considered the strongest ever. You can be proud of that. You don't need to wave it in people's faces. Oh, thank God. If you got a big dick, you don't need to tell people you got a big dick. Even if you got a normal-sized dick, you don't need to tell people you got a big dick. Just, why, do you, why are you telling everybody about the size of your dick? Just be okay with it. It's very irrelevant for most conversations doesn't really matter well the grocery store I'm gonna pick up uh, eggs milk uh, butter I've got a huge penis you know just do it it's kind of insecure but I will say you know to be fair and to, to point the lens inward as I as I try to do whenever I make fun of of other people it's always um, with with a bit of self-awareness Canadians are guilty of exactly the same thing this is depths one right yeah okay Canadians are guilty of exactly the same thing because whenever it's like, yeah, well, we'll invade your country from Americans, and oh, that'll, you'll be sorry then. The stock response from Canadians is always like, yeah, how did that work out 202 years ago in the War of 1812, motherfucker? And then, inevitably, the person that you're speaking to goes, what the hell is the War of 1812? That's not the American Revolution or the Civil War, or one of the World Wars, or Vietnam, or Korea. It, well, it was a war that was fought between the uh, British Empire and the United States. We're not going to take that, by the way. Uh, the British Empire and the United States, um in 1812 and uh, we weren't Canada back then but it was kind of like British Canada so it was like our ancestors we fought and you burned down our you know capital and then we burned down your White House so it's kind of like we consider it a draw which is a win when you started it but at the same time you know I've been guilty of saying like yeah well how did that work out in 1812 what you you didn't we didn't win it's fucking 200 years ago man that's like five generations back they won we can't take credit for that shit probably should have walked out of this room huh or just use my ladder. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Anyway. I'm just saying, why why do we have to use this uh, the military as a dick measuring contest be between our two countries? Why don't we use the amount of groundbreaking c comedians from the 90s and early 2000s? And I think that's a very good objective measure. We have Jim Carrey. You have Rob Schneider. We have Mike Myers. You have Carrot Top. I think that's a fair measure. And I, I, you know, I'm not trying to say that I have a horse in this race. I'm just saying, you know, there's the objective evidence. Why don't you pick a side? We have uh, John Candy. You have Gallagher. You know, there's vaunted uh, comedians on each side. I'm just saying that's how all future wars should be fought with jokes. You know, redheads not warheads. Blondes, not bombs. I'm talking about brunettes, not fighter jets. Oh, it finally happened. All right, so this run's shaping up pretty darn nicely. Magician is not what I was looking for there, but that's okay. Uh, we're Eve, Polyphemus, good damage. Book of Revelations uh, combined with Nun's Habit now is unbelievably good for us. Skeleton Key. I wouldn't uh, expect us to necessarily become guppy or any kind of shenaniganery like that on this run, but... By the way, I apologize, because... I realize that when I go off on these tangents, it always ends up taking on this, like, U.S. and Canadian bent to it. And I don't mean to alienate my, uh, my larger global viewer base, but the truth of the matter is I just don't know that much about Bulgarian stereotypes and, you know, what, what their national and personal pressures are and stuff like that. Maybe one day I will, and then we'll, we'll try to give equal representation to that. But until then, I talk about what I know, which is largely, um, you know, pop culture from the age when I was like 12 to 15 years old. And uh, occasionally some stuff about this video game. And then being offended, but also apologizing later because of my Canadian nature. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Well, you know what comes next there most of the time, don't you? We're not even going to pick up that penny because fuck all y'all. Cash doesn't rule everything around me, Wu-Tang Clan. You can't take it with you. I mean, I can take it with me to the next floor, which is probably a good enough reason to pick it up, but... Do we know what this pill does? We don't know what this pill does? Alright, I'm glad I took it, at least. So I would say that, um... This is not... Oh, here we go. Everyone take a drink. It's not a one run. But it is very, very close. And it, there's, there's not much separating it at all. 
Um, what I would love to see is a uh, is a guppy's paw. Permanent horror Babylon state, tons of permanent Polaroid invincibility. Ideally, before we did it, we would have a. Ideally, before we did it, we would have more red hearts, which is why I'm playing the Blood Bank. Well, that's one reason. The other reason is, you know, infinite spirit hearts here, I guess. We should go to our boss trap room as well. I kind of got distracted by my whole Canadian tangent. Ah, uh, we should go to it right now then. Um, but yeah, that's, uh. That's something that's kind of prudent for us. We're very lucky that we got the payout there, and I'm very happy that we did. Let's check out our boss trap room. Hopefully, we'll get some more HP in there. That's some more HP. See what we got over here. Uh, yeah, Squeezy's definitely worth taking. The extra spirit hearts are super nice. Kind of wish that blood bank lived a little longer because we could have uh, milked even more spirit hearts out of it. But that's okay. It's not necessarily that important right now. This is the best Eve run I've had in ages. And I mean that sincerely. Uh, normally, I mean we're only on the depths part two. That's relatively early to be calling it. Like it's relatively early for a run to be sorted. But we pretty much are sorted right now. I guess now that we've uh, got that Guppy's Pod, you know, tangent out of the way, the only other thing that's like conventional that would be really good for us to have is the ability to fly. So if we got to deal with the devil and there was no Guppy's Paw on it, but it gave us the ability to get like Spirit of the Night or something like that, sock it to me. I am prepared. Oh, that was really bad. That's all right. I would also love a, any kind of metric, basically, or measure that would allow me to actually get to the... Uh, Permanent Horror of Babylon State, but we're not quite there, and, uh, I mean, I guess Guppy's Paw is that, um, that measure, so, if we could get that, I would, uh, desire it. But for now, we'll just keep this going, and be careful about that. 35 cents is more than we'll almost certainly need for the rest of this run. We already, uh, have gone to every single shop. It's just judgments at this point. And slot machines and fortune tellers, which, neither of which are really that prudent for me at this point, I'd say, because we got pretty much everything you need to make an Eve run work without them. Decent HP, really good spirit hearts, um, and, and our damage is, is largely taken care of, although it would be nice to get more, but, you know, Polyphemus plus the Pact with enough HP left over to survive is the kind of thing you can't really complain about. Bobby bomb -omb is acceptable. I knew that would be our second secret room. It had to be. It's not like I'm some kind of genius. It's just, you know, pretty much inevitable. Oh, we would have been able to get so many spirit hearts, but that's okay. It's not that much of a concern. We're gonna be uh, moving along here, taking our blood bag and then having a good time, presumably. We can't teleport out of this boss room, which is the disappointing part, but I'm pretty sure that when it comes to the next floor, we're gonna be in a great position regardless, so I'm not, uh, I'm not super concerned about it. And we might as well get that last penny. Alright. We milked this floor for pretty much all it was worth, and we got quite a lot of goodness out of it. Yeah, that was really bad of me. But in my defense, the foot kind of faked me out. It took forever to come down, and then when it did, it, 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 did it hemmed me in so close to the wall. It's my own fault, but at the same time, you know, give credit where credit's due. The game put me in a position there where I could take damage. So, you know what? If this was Crawl, I'd be saying, oh, you dirty, dirty dangler. That was some um, sweet technique there. Oh, that was really bad damage. It's all good. And we'll just keep it going here, and that's the end. We even got, oh, that's so good. So we got HP times two, and a spirit heart for this, which is amazing because I'm still holding out hope that we end up getting that uh, Guppy's Paw deal. Since we don't have an XL floor here, I think it's fairly likely that we actually end up having our dream come true. If we don't, if we find our boss room right away, I'll probably just go to it though. Like, I'm not overly concerned about min-maxing the entire floor to the point of like walking around to find out if there's another curse room. Especially given that uh, I don't have a D6. I think our odds of actually finding Guppy's Paw in that situation are pretty low. I think our odds of finding Guppy's Paw are low regardless, to be honest with you. But we, um, I think our best chance is on that deal with the devil. And if we, uh, if we find our boss room right away, I'll, I'll pursue that with, uh, you know, with bells on. If we don't find it right away then uh, we'll uh, explore around a little bit more, pretty much by necessity. It would be awesome if I didn't have to fight death just to get a third level cube of meat here, because I don't want a third level cube of meat. Uh, but we're going to have to, and I guess death is probably the best option for us, because if we don't fight death, we're going to end up fighting like Conquest. And there's our boss right away, and I really, really don't want to fight Conquest or Headless Horseman. Because even though we don't have the ability to fly, 
Uh, the Book of Revelation is substantially more valuable for us. And death is a lot easier. Alright. It worked out pretty much the way that... Uh, the, the best case scenario. We're not going to get third level cube of meat. We're going to stick with second level. I think having... Um, it, it, it varies situationally, but I think in our situation where we only have one orbital to begin with, it's better for us to stick with that one orbital. Because it's it, it kind of makes the decision very easy, if that makes sense. Like, we don't really have to worry about it. Would losing an orbital be bad? Yeah, it would be terrible. So we're going to um, just be content to not do that. Now, knockback here is going to be a little bit of a... An annoyance, as you've noticed, but we still get our deal with. I picked it up like an idiot after going through all that discussion. What a ding dong! Okay, we'll take the mark for sure, though. We could take the, the guppy's tail. I don't think it's that important, though. I'm an idiot, basically. So we'll head down to the next floor with that knowledge firmly in mind. Sure, I mean, there's there's positives about taking third level Cuban meat. The main one is that it allows me to rationalize the fact that I picked it up. I guess, you know, I could spin you a web here. But the good news is that. It does give us some extra DPS. The bad news is it's going to make the Isaac and Blue Baby fights a nightmare. More of a nightmare than they were to begin with, at least. But the, you know, I guess the good news about that is that we have Nun's Habit, so we're still going to, we're basically taking halved damage for the rest of the game. But, yeah, that was a bad play. You know, everybody has brain farts sometimes. You take the bread out of the toast, or you take the bread out of the bread cupboard and then you take the meat out of the fridge and then you make your sandwich then you put the bread back in the fridge and the meat in the bread cupboard and then it gets all smelly everyone's done something like that at one point in their lives it's not just oh wow lucky us sort of um it's not just for you know people suffering the early signs of dementia happens to the best of us and the worst of us but the best of us as well i'm not saying uh, which category there i consider myself to fall into we probably have differing opinions great aim so far and again, the Guppy dream is not really about becoming Guppy. It's just about getting Guppy's paw, but I don't think it's going to show up. We do have a curse room. I was, you know, in the back of my mind, I was hoping to some extent this was the wrong way so that we could actually get a curse room. Also, if you're wondering when I'm going to use this magician card, put your ear close to the speaker because I'm going to whisper a secret. It doesn't matter. There you go, there's my ASMR channel started. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Card's not very good. For us, at least. We'll probably use it when we have, like, no other choice, if that makes sense. Like, when we're on, like, our final boss fight or something, we'll use it. Because, hey, oh, we have this, we might as well give him everything we got, right? Might as well give it all our love and all our hugs and kisses, too. I would guess that our boss is pretty much guaranteed to be in the top left corner. Maybe we'll find some extra special rooms on the way. The real disappointment with taking third level Meat Boy is that if we were going to take third level Meat Boy, we should have taken the other Meat, so we would have gotten to fourth level, which is just basically extra damage with no other expenses attached to it. So it's really like the worst of both possible worlds, but... If my hunch about this run is correct, it shouldn't matter basically at all. We're we're already um, probably hitting a little bit above our weight class, so yeah, it really shouldn't be a concern. And we're fighting Mom's heart next with 15 homing bombs. That should be more than enough with our extra damage and our meat chewing. Uh, meat Boy does he f's with the bombs though, which is annoying. The only thing you can do with the bombs is ba with the bombs. Maybe a little bang the bang dicky on the side, depending on uh, you know whether you're afraid a little afraid of a little tang or not. All right, so one shot on each of these. Nope, two shots on each of those. That opens me up to getting hit a little bit. Thank you, Meat Boy. Don't kick the bomb out of the way. I'll fight you in real life. I think homing bombs are our defense against that. They stick in there, and even though Meat Boy gives them a little bit of turbidity, they uh, you know they got some sweet epoxy going on there that keeps them from really drifting too far. Sweets. Okay, so that's our third bomb. Uh, I think we're only going to need to use like two more, if I had to guess. See? Oh, that homing bomb was sweet. Oh, careful. Ah, that was not careful. That was dumb. I don't know. I, I feel like we're a little weaker than I expected us to be within the context of the Isaac and Blue Baby fights, but I still think we've got our... Uh, we've got a win pretty much laid out for us here if we want it. So let's head up to the next floor. 
And we found our second secret room right away. I was so hoping that was going to be Guppy's Paw. One of these days, it will be, man. And by one of these days, I mean probably like our first deal with the devil room next run. This guy thinks he's going to get a deal with the devil next run. Please don't let that end up being hilarious for all the wrong reasons. Okay. Not such a good uh, placement on this. Oh, Meat Boy. Never leave a job half finished, man. You had it all taken care of. You just got to chew them once they get knocked down to the ooze state. Stop chasing uh, waterfalls here. There we go. A little bit better. This is an um, unannoying room. Maybe not the most annoying room, but unannoying room, no question about it. That was a great homing bomb, though. Pretty much did triple the damage that we would expect to do with one bomb. So I'm trying to just take out, you know... Again, it's that whole... The Matrix of, like... Uh, not the Matrix, but... A, a Matrix of, like, enemies that make it safe and unsafe for me. Clear out the enemies, and then much of the floor becomes safer. Now, that didn't stop me from taking damage, because I'm a bit of a ding-dong sometimes. Now, this is great. We should be able to generate some surplus spirit hearts here. I guess I'm not going to play that again. Uh, yet. And also possibly snag, of course, an item out of this as well, which is really the the dream goal. I was thinking maybe you could perhaps give me an item that was, uh, you know, based off of a cat's visage. I'm thinking maybe a Blanky's head. If he pays out with Tammy's head, I'm going to be pissed. So we're hoping to get maybe some half red hearts. Oh, that was really bad. But again, we're generating a, a pretty nice surplus. That's good. We'll come back here. Might as well generate the spirit hearts right away. Uh, I mean, there's a good reason not to, but I'm not going to say it. This is just a math, arithmetic thing that's unlikely to matter too much. If he... Oh, that was so bad. Well, okay. Just leave. Um... If, we, if he pays out, we want him to pay out on our, on even-numbered plays, basically. So that he doesn't ruin our chances to get that play by taking extra time. Secret room contains uh, almost enough money to take us to the magic number. I was really hoping for small rock, but a golden chest could be better, but was not. So, there you go. What happens if we, uh, if we beat... That was really bad. If we beat Isaac, and then we take pinky eye into the room and, and enter the chest. Does that just end our run? Or would it give us the ability to actually go to the chest? With pinky eye. Oh! The dream! That was surprising. Feeling pretty great about it though. So F you demon judgment. Permanent damage bonus. Don't mind if I already did. That is our boss room as well. Everything came up Millhouse very quickly. 69% chance of coming up Millhouse. For once, the weatherman knew what he was talking about. Now. Isaac should be toughish. Blue Baby should be toughish. But I think we've pretty much uh, we've got the win now. That Guppy's Paw is, is just an extraordinary pickup for us. Drop some homing bombs in there. Let's be honest, we're going to get hit here. We're going to get hit a lot. But... You know, we have this uh, permanent Polaroid invincibility. We're not shooting that often, and we're basically taking half damage. So, you know what? The second hit is free from our perspective. I'd say maximum we could hit like eight times here. That's not so bad, considering that we would only take four hits of damage from getting hit eight times in the first place. So, yeah, I, I think mathematically it's almost a certainty that we've won this run. And that's the most boring way to win a run, is just like, well, I've looked at the numbers, and uh, the lines never intersect, so I'm pretty sure that we're going to win. But, that's... Uh, on an Eve run, I'll take it, man. Eve run Mom's Knife, I'll take it. Eve run Guppy, I'll take it. Eve run, you know, hobble together a, an assortment of items that end up, you know, corroborating to make it work. Collaborating to make it work, I guess. It's cruel that those words are so close together. Like, corroborate and collaborate, they're very, very close to being the same... Meaning, I get it messed up. We're going to be heading down to the next floor. Secret room's right there. Bomb bag, little gish. Oh, the poison bombs are so good. Now, technology might have just ruined this run, but I can't give up the opportunity to have technology in Polyphemus 
simultaneously. Let's move along here. Not a boss room, probably. Well, definitely guaranteed. Uh, our Technology 2 Polyphemus shots are doing crazy damage, so I don't feel like I've made the wrong decision here. Yeah, we couldn't see it on Famine's health bar, because for some reason Famine's health bar was just not moving, but uh, we can see it on War's health bar. We are doing some serious damage. Now, we're going to probably expect to take a lot more damage against... Uh, well, we don't even need to fight on this room, but I guess since we've taken damage, we might as well. Um, we'd expect to take a lot more damage on Blue Baby here. Stars. Well, let's try it. Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, we'd expect to take a lot more damage on Blue Baby just because we're shooting more frequently, but I guess we were already pretty much taking damage, like, as soon as our invincibility wore off, so it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. We're more or less guaranteed to get the win here. That's very exciting. We're not even seeing our spirit arts yet. This has been one of the best... Forget Eve. This has been one of the best runs we've had in recent memory, so I'm very excited about that. And if we take... Yeah, sock it to me, baby. I don't care if we take more damage. That's the end of that run. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.